Here we go. The the last part of the talk. So here we uh will talk about the main result. What the main result is, and um, we'll look at we'll look at a little bit of the proof, get an idea like why the main result is true. And uh, last, I want to talk a little a little more about the spectrum method, so then I can fill in the uh, the the. The gap or like bridge, how、uh, we can go from the theoretical theoretical end to the applications.、Okay. All right. So main result.、Um, before I state the theorem, let's、uh, get a、uh, just a rough idea. So the the theorem is saying any closed Manifold can be embedded by a map constructed using the heat kernels, or you can use truncated heat kernels of the convection Laplacian. We'll see how this map is,、uh, um, is being defined later in the next slide. But here, just like you, we have a map, and this map is constructed by the heat kernels at a certain time t.、Um, Uh, using a finite number of points on the manifold, and more to that, this map can be made arbitrarily close to an isometry, and both the diffusion time t and the number of points are being controlled by the geometric properties. So here, the n is a dimension of the manifold. Kappa is the upper bound of the Ricci curvature and its、uh, derivatives. I zero is the injectivity radius lower bound, and V is the volume upper bound. So, because T and N are、uh, they're only dependent on the geometric quantities, so the map that we constructed. It's independent. I mean, it can be used for for any manifold that satisfies、uh, the same geometric map. Therefore,、um, we can consider a collection of manifolds. So let me write it as n n kappa、uh, i zero. Actually, it's iota、uh, v. So that's any closed n-dimensional manifold with Ricci curvature bounds, injectivity radius lower bound, and volume upper bound. Okay, so there we go. Even any epsilon positive, there exists a time t naught, where t naught only depends on n kappa injectivity radius lower bound. In the epsilon, so that for any time less than the t naught, there exists a n naught, a number n naught for the number of points, where n naught only depends on n kappa injectivity radius lower bound epsilon, the t and the volume, so that any manifold in the in the manifold set. There exists points q1 to q0, so that the map B is an embedding. We don't have self-intersections, and、uh, the B phi is bounded by one minus epsilon and one plus epsilon. And so this is、uh, so so this highlight part tells you that the map. Can, uh, is is close to an isometry being controlled by the epsilon, and、uh, phi is defined through、um, this this equation in the middle. Okay, so here the square root a is a small constant coming from doing a partition of the manifold n, and the v e is also a constant. It is obtained from the standard The the standard Euclidean heat kernel.、Uh, so I'm writing it as K T M R M, but actually it doesn't need a notation because we're not using it. I just I'm just I just wanna emphasize that it's um it's a heat kernel from the Euclidean space. Okay, 
and the um the two t part the two t part is uh two t to the power three n plus two over four this is to balance the uh, parabolic rescaling so we're gonna do a rescaling and and this uh this two t will uh get uh absorbed into the rescaling okay so we'll see what happens so I'm not able to show how to choose the 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 QIs and other things, but using the fact that the manifold is locally Euclidean and the exponential decay of the heat kernel and its gradient, we are able to see why uh, the d phi is close to is close to one. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so um, here I'm gonna say, okay, after some work, I have a scale R, okay? So um, I can't tell you how to choose the R, but once you have a way to choose the R, then you can um, define a uh, rescaled heat kernel that's called K bar, okay? All right. So then, where's my cursor? So then, uh, the d phi is defined. I'm sorry, I can't find my cursor. Where did it go? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so the d phi squared by straightforward computation from its definition up here. Um, that's this guy in the second line in the equation. Okay, so there's an I didn't do anything. I just I just simply compute the the uh the dot product, right? Okay. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is uh because here the reference point is x. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh so q i is a delta net. Q i the the set q i is a delta net over the uh the manifold i'm gonna separate the uh the points so if i is in the set i h it means q i the point q i is sitting nearby the reference point x so it's in a close close neighborhood of x and then um if i is not in the set i h that means qi is far away from x. Okay? So, because if, let's look at the second term, this, this one on the, on the right. So here, because we know that, we know that the gradient of the heat kernel has de exponential decay, so therefore you can see the whole thing will be small. Okay, so you can you can control this by uh, epsilon. You can bound this by epsilon. Now the first term. So now um, this is this is the qi that's a nearby by uh, the point x. So we look at the coordinate chart. We actually use the harmonic coordinate chart. Okay. So now on this chart, locally, the Heat kernel here is gonna be very close to the standard Euclidean heat kernel. So when I'm summing over uh, these numbers, I'm actually basically doing a Riemann sum of an integral of the uh, rescaled heat kernel, but on this over this small region, this rescaled heat kernel is very close to the standard Euclidean heat kernel. So therefore, if we get the uh, coefficient, the constant v e from the integral of the Euclidean heat kernel, then taking the ratio, the whole thing is gonna be uh, close to one. And because we have Riemann sum here, so we actually have an explicit formula for the integral. 
right? So uh, by careful by doing careful analysis, you can actually show the first term is close to one. That's how we can see the d phi being bounded by one minus epsilon and one plus epsilon for any x. Okay, so roughly speaking, that's how it works. All right, so let's uh, look at the uh, the result again. So we're using the heat kernel to construct coordinates. So uh, Q1 gives you the first coordinate, Q2 gives you the first, uh, the second coordinate, and so on, right? So you have a map constructed using the heat kernels of the connection Laplacian. Okay, um, and the time t and the number of points are bounded by the geometric quantities n kappa uh, injectivity radius lower bound and the volume. Okay, and uh, the map can be made arbitrarily close to an isometry, and this is what do we uh, what do we did over here. Okay, so. Uh, D phi is bounded by 1 minus epsilon and 1 plus epsilon. All right. Okay. Um, so, last, I want to say a little bit more about the spectral method. Mm. So, I want to fill in a little more background story for the spectral method to bridge theoretical results and algorithms for applications for those who are interested. Um, yeah, this is for fun, basically. Okay, so um, both the spectrograph theory and the spectral geometry have a long history. It is known that the spectrum of the graph Laplacian captures important structural properties of the graph. And the spectrum of the Laplace Beltrami operator captures important geometric properties of the manifold. Where there are promising spectral algorithms such as diffusion maps and vector diffusion maps and, and more, there are convergence results showing how the graph Laplacian converge to how the graph Laplacian converges to the Laplace Beltrami operator, as well as how the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the graph Laplacian converge to the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of the Laplace Beltrami operator. So, as a result, we know that the success of this machine learning methods are not accidental. Okay? So the discrete counterparts of the spectral embeddings, they indeed have nice geometric properties, and they can give you important information of the data asset. Um, thank you for listening to the talk. Bye.